Welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I am the founder and host, Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp. And with me today is Simone Souter. And here's a bit about Simone. Simone Souter is a certified PR consultant and visibility strategist, publicity rock star, and y'all can't use that because it's trademark, and best selling author. She teaches coaches and consultants how to get featured in prestigious prestigious magazines and podcast shows so they get seen, heard, and highly paid. Without wasting time on social media or paying for ads and agencies, the beauty of her approach is that following her publicity rock star method, her clients get all they need to build an impactful and profitable brand. Visibility, authority, credibility, and trust. And who doesn't want that? So today on this segment, we're going to unpack the secret to getting publicity without paying for agencies or having a huge following with Simone Souter. Welcome to GEMS Podcast. Hello, and thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited about the conversation. Me too, because you're actually the first to dive into this topic. And you know, sometimes paying for those ads they don't necessarily give you the ROI that you intended. And you look and you're like, I've spent $10 here, $50 here, a hundred. And some people even spend thousands and they don't see the intended traffic flowing in. So before we dive into that, Simone, I want to know a wild card factor about Simone. I like, I love your glasses. They are wild and (laughs) We both wear glasses. So outside of your bio and what people know about you, share a fun fact that my audience surely doesn't know. And maybe your audience may not know. Well, I am a huge, huge, huge rock and heavy metal fan. I love Rammstein. So I'm originally from Germany. I live in the Netherlands, but like I have them seen them like more than 10 times or something like they are amazing on stage obviously i'm biased because i really love the music but uh, so yeah if anybody has a chance who loves the uh, rock and industrial metal go see rumstein amazing <laughs> and now let's talk about the publicity a rock star what led you to creating it and was it out of necessity or was it something that you said you know what i've tried you know i've tried paying the paying for the ads, I've tried the agencies, and it didn't work. So I'm going to be the own solution to my own problem. Mm -hmm. So to answer that question, I have to go a little bit back in in my story. Basically, so I studied journalism and PR. Um, I have now 20 years of experience. um, And I, I used to work for like big companies, like, you know, Uh, like I I will not mention the names, like the biggest dating online dating company in the world and like really huge companies. But, but that it it wasn't always that I, that I told coaches and and consultants to, to get their own PR. So how it all started is basically in 2012, almost 10 years back, my ex left me after 10 years relationship from one day to another, he replaced me within four weeks, his new partner moved in she, they, they got married and I was devastated. So I went through um, a life crisis for more than two years. And um, it, it, yeah, it was really hard to recover. And I didn't have anybody who helped me on that journey. So after those two years, I obviously I came out, you know, stronger and shinier on the other end. But I decided that I wanted to help other women to overcome heartache much faster than I did, you know, to really shorten that uh, that journey because I I had like a lot of unnecessary suffering. Um, And well, anyway, so I did and I um, I launched my first business as a breakup and divorce coach with the goal of helping other women overcoming that that struggle faster. So and in the beginning. I did what all the online marketing gurus told me, like, you know, like do social media, do networking, do webinars, do Facebook ads, do, I don't know, like so many things that you can do, right? Like all the things. And I did that. And after six months, I was so frustrated. I was exhausted. 
And I thought like, okay, like I can't do this. I, I imagined it to be easier to, to build and run a business. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going back to the drawing board and I just do what I'm really good at, which is PR. Like I, you know, I used to work as a journalist. I used to work as a PR manager. I'm good at that. And I decided to actually utilize PR and the media and podcasters and influencers for my business growth. So what I did, because I, I, I worked for big corporate companies and um, I, I used to send press releases, right? So they, and they worked well because they were household names, like the companies I worked for, they are well known. And right, so journalists opened the, the emails um, and sometimes they picked up the message. So I, what I tried in the beginning is to send press releases uh, as a small business owner and I was super excited because I was like, yeah, now, now I'm going, like getting the word out there. And I hit crickets. And I was so, again, I was frustrated um, because that is my jam, right? PR, journalism. So then I, um, I, I said, okay, there's, there has to be another way. And I talked to other journalists um, because back then I used to work as a PR manager for a longer time. So I, I, I talked to people that I studied with and to other journalists. And what I found is that journalists actually want to have an individual email. Like they don't want to have press releases because they, they receive between 150 and 300 emails per day. Um, so I changed my approach and I fine tuned it. And um, well, that it worked because I have created an advertising value of more than 3 million euros in just 18 months. I've been featured on uh, like cosmopolitan and in style and closer I've been on tv and like countless podcast shows like you name it from there I was discovered by my by my publisher by a publishing house and they asked me if I want to publish a book my book became a best-selling book I have also created a website with more than a hundred thousand monthly organic readers so I mean I was very successful then right so but then so this is a very long answer to your question but uh, then I, um, I, uh, I also packed up my stuff in Munich and sold everything and I went traveling as a digital nomad for three years. So I naturally met a lot of other entrepreneurs because this is obviously the people I tried to connect with. And so people asked me like, how did you do this? How did you get into the media? How did you get featured in Cosmo and all these kinds of things? And I was like, well, actually it's, it's, it's not rocket science, right? You have to do this, 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 this. And this is how I came up with, with my publicity rockstar method and also uh, how I came up with my business, basically. So in, in 2018, I decided to do this as like a, like a side gig next to my breakup and divorce business. Took up, took up like pretty quick. I'm not working as a relationship coach anymore because I just don't have the bandwidth. It's like really um, like my PR business is the only business that I run now. Um, but yeah, that's basically the story behind what I do, why I do, uh, uh, why I do what I do that way. Um, and, and I, you know, I just want to give, um, especially women, but um, generally entrepreneurs a voice and help them to get their message out there without burning thousands of dollars in advertising or paying agencies for it. That's basically it. And I love that you shared the back end story because it connects us with the trials that you had to go through, the hurdles that you overcame in order to get to where you are now. And sometimes people don't like to share their start ugly moments or the frustrations or when they hit those pitfalls because people they're like oh people want to hear about the success no we want to hear what did you do to obtain the level of success that you have now so we can try to be within the same bandwidth not be like you but be in the same arena so I love how you went through those various things and each time something didn't work, you pivot it and you learn to adapt to something else. And you also had seen some out of the box um, phases where you did something that was unconventional, but those unconventional things got you noticed. And all of that is what makes up the publicity rock star. And it's amazing, Simone. And behind you, as you were speaking, I, I glanced up and I looked at your wall and I love the poster that you have up. So do you mind on the sharing why you have that poster up? And is it something that just motivates you to keep going? Because I'm not trying to be like the rest, darling. <laughs> 
Yeah, so the post basically says, don't be like the, the rest of them, darling. And it, it's just so crucial, right? So um, really, like for me, everything is about story, right? So and what I just shared, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's also, it was very painful, right? I mean, I was a very self-conscious. He left me after 10 years. I was busy thinking about getting married and how, how our kids could be named and all these kind of things. And I shared this publicly. It was also, you know, sometimes I also felt humiliated um, like, because, you know, not good enough and all these kind of things. But share, like all of us, we have a unique story. And with our story, we can inspire other people and we can motivate other people and we can impact so many lives and at the end of the day this is like it doesn't matter to uh, what coach consultant or entrepreneur in general I talk to we all want to make an impact that's why we started our business right and by us being ourselves and like not being like everybody else not trying to fit in this is how we stand out that's what that's what makes us unique what makes us us and um also if you if you open up and you're vulnerable you also allow your your clients to be vulnerable and to open up right you 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 like our society is so strict about being open and about sharing what we truly feel that's what you said right like you might you might think that people only want to hear about successes but it's not what people want to hear because that's not inspiring it's actually demotivating because it's like oh this person is there and it was just an overnight success there is nothing such a, nothing such an, an overnight success everybody has a story and when we share that story we differentiate us um, from from our you know competitors or from from other people who offer the same thing um and it, it makes us accessible and human and, you know, people buy from people. That is what it is at the end of the day. And um, yeah, so so that's, I always share this with my clients, like, don't be like the rest of them. Uh, also, because I, I I push my, sorry, I push my clients also to, to um, share strong opinions because they work um, into me, like, like mediocre opinions, they don't work. It's like either one side or the other, but that can be very, confronting and very pushy and you can you can get feedback that you might don't want but if you try to be for everybody you're for nobody so you know this is how i see it and then yeah that's that's basically why the post is there <laughs> absolutely and i'm glad that you push your clients because that's a way to stand out in a crowd that's full of people that are doing something similar because people are going to remember that wild card factor people are going to remember how you were uniquely you they're going to remember oh okay she wasn't like anyone else and like for example i'll use the brand lululemon there's no other brand like lululemon lululemon capitalize on who their avatar are they have certain pants and even if you try to find a replica of the athleisure wear nothing is going to feel the same texture wise or if it does the quality may not be there so you get what you paid for so think about who you are think about how you show up in the marketplace and how you can give yourself a competitive advantage um, in the sea of other competitors who are in the same business and another thing I like to tell my clients whenever I operate in the coaching space is try to look for ways to complement each other instead of being in competition because that woman or man may have something that your business doesn't have, but you could take both ideas and merge them together while also protecting your assets by having proper documentation like non-disclosure agreements and et cetera to make sure they don't rip off your idea or vice versa or the communication lines don't get blurred. And I think that also gives you a leg up. What would you say to that, Simone, from a PR um, perspective? Well, I mean, um, I, I, I love to collaborate with others, right? So, and it's, it's just exactly what you said, you know, um, like, they are, you know, you can be a business coach and not every business coach is like the, every other business coach, right? So uh, I'm a business coach too, but I, I'm, I focus really on getting publicity. Um, so, and I know um, people who are also publicity or PR coach, and they focus actually on really getting into other people's audiences, which I do as well, but I focus 
on online magazines and on podcast shows. And of course, there is a wide spectrum. I mean, there are, you know, masterminds and Facebook groups and all these kind of things, how you can collaborate. And so, yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's, I, I absolutely am a, am a fan of that. So, um, and um, yeah, I think it is very, very beneficial if you, if you do this to, you know, not only grow your business and your brand, but also to build relationships, which, you know, everything is about relationships, especially in business. Well, especially in life, let's say it like that. <laughs> and then do you think that um, having that piece will help help be one of the secret ingredients to getting publicity without paying for an agency? Or walk us through, like, what are some of your tips for helping others who may either be starting out their entrepreneurship journey or they may be an entrepreneur, but they've hit a plateau and they can't figure out what's not working and they need to you know quote unquote unclog their pipes and get it flowing again so walk us through that Simone and feel free to rephrase the question if it makes it easier to assess so I think that the the shortest answer that I can give you to that is if I if I map out my publicity rockstar method right so these are basically six steps that you as an entrepreneur as a coach can take to actually get publicity without paying for it right so the step, step number one is your rock star offer. That stands for you have to understand your ideal client. I mean, that's the foundation of your business. You have to understand what you want to be known for. So when people hear your name, what is it that you want them to connect it to? And you should have an offer in place that you want to sell because, you know, um, you want to get those leads flowing into your business and then you want to sell something, right? Selling is not the first, the first goal of PR. But how I teach it to my clients, it's a, it's, a, it's a big part of how we utilize the publicity, right? So that's step number one. Step number two is, is the audience. The audience stands for finding the right media outlet and finding the right journalist or podcast host. So um, the, the biggest mistake that I see that people make is that they pitch media outlets, but they pitch random media outlets because they think, oh, this is a fancy name or, you know, this looks good or whatever, but they do not actually analyze the media outlet if, if they have their ideal readership, for example, right? So that's the step number two, define uh, like the audience, define the media outlets, find the journalist that is interested in your topic. Step number three is the hit. The hit stands for how do you grab the media's attention. So journalists are interested in stories, in your expertise, and in a strong opinion. So that's basically it. Um, this is also why press releases don't work. Most press releases are boring. So never send a press release, especially not as a small business owner. Find something that is interesting to a particular journalist and send them a pitch. So that's the step number four is the stage. And the stage stands for write a bulletproof pitch, write a pitch that actually lands um, or get, grabs the journalist's attention and that you know also helps them to open the email and to say yes to what you have to offer. And then the next step is, uh, the fifth step is the performance. The performance stands for you either hand in a guest article if you pitched yourself as a contributor or you do the interview, which is either a media interview or a podcast interview. So that is step number five and step number six, which is, uh, it's a step that so many people get wrong, um, is the promotion, right? So um, the promotion is basically to leverage your media co uh, coverage for clients, cash and reputation. So um, you have to like, think about how much effort you have put in there. You now you got featured. And mo what most people do is like, they put it on their social media, say like, hey, I was featured in Forbes. And maybe they slam it on their website with a CNAS banner and that's it. And there are so, so many more ways how to actually utilize the media coverage um, that you got to, you know, to get clients from it. Because after all, this is what we want. Of, of course, we also build our reputation, but also building our reputation is to get clients easier, to make the sale, the, the sale easier, right? So um that is the framework. And if you follow those steps and you implement all of those, um, then you will get, you know, featured. And that's what the PR industry doesn't want you to know because it's still, and I, like people don't like if I talk about this, especially not on LinkedIn, but I don't really mind. So um, the PR industry is really, um, 
like they sell you a lot of ideas for a lot of money um, and you're actually better off to do it yourself because you know your business the best and you are your, your biggest cheerleader. You will never find a, a, an agency um, who, who will be able to represent your company or your business and your mission, your story, the way you do. This is also why I teach this to my clients. And also because I do this of a fraction of a cost of a company, of a, of a PR agency, because they learn a lifetime skill and they can just use it over and over again for their entire business career. Wow, those are incredible um, six steps, Simone. And I was actually taking notes, so I'm not sure if you saw me. So the first one you talked about was the Rockstar offer. Do you think that having a click funnel or having a freebie is something that you could use as bait to draw people in so they can kind of get a feel of who you are? And then that way, once they get a feel of who you are, then they feel welcome to be branded by association. Yes, that's exactly also what I teach my clients. So, I mean, there are a lot of ways how you can utilize publicity for, uh, for your business growth, but uh, having a lead magnet that is actually interesting to your ideal client. Let me emphasize that because there are a lot of people out there who have lead magnets or they have a sign up saying like, sign up for my newsletter. Uh, so if, you are, if you're one of those who says sign up for my newsletter, you really have to get a lead magnet that do, that's interesting for your ideal client because like it's really, it becomes harder and harder to actually, you know, get an email address because we are all overwhelmed because we subscribe to so many things. So you actually really have to bring something to the table. So um, it always starts, you know, of course, with your messaging, but then with your lead magnet. Um, and you really want to hone into your ideal client and their desires and what do they want to achieve and what is it that you can offer and connect that offer, let that free offer to your paid offer, right? So, um, and of course, uh, publicity is an amazing way to promote that and to share that and to bring in new, uh, new leads. Thank you for um, answering that because I felt like I just wanted to make sure I was connecting the dots. And then I have some other questions really quick. So audience, finding the right media outlet. So whenever I heard this, I'm like, well, do your market research. And whenever I think about the field that I'm in, I like to know, okay, who are my competitors? What are they doing? How do I differentiate? How do I stand out? But then also, do does my audience tie with my core values and my mission statement? What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean that that is the that's the foundational work. So I mean that's what I what I make my clients do as well. And that's also, I mean, there are like a lot of strategies how you can build your media list and how you can find the first media outlets to reach out to. But one of the fastest one, it's also called fast lane method, is actually check out your competitors and see like like really the ones that are bigger that you are like uh, doing the same thing or similar things, and you know see if they have been featured in the media. And most of them will have because that's, you know, the bigger you grow, the more important, um, or like it, it becomes, right? So, um, so uh, yeah, absolutely, you know, um, check out where they are and what also what they talked about and see if you can add something on that. So that's one strategy. Awesome. And then I'm going to table the questions there for now. So I want to be respectful of our time commitment. And Simone, I want to um, ask you to give our listeners and viewers a call to action for this segment. So um, if you want to know more insider tips, like I mean, I shared a lot of tips with you now, but if you want to know more, then you can go to my website, simonesauter.com slash insider dash tips, and you can download my free ebook and um, find out more. And for anyone interested in connecting with you further, Simone, outside of your website and getting those insider tips, and thank you for sharing that, how can they reach you on social media where you hang out the most? I'm on LinkedIn. I'm uh, like really big on LinkedIn. So um, I, and I only focus on LinkedIn. Of course, I'm also on, on Facebook and in, Instagram, but if you really want to connect with me, if you really also want to learn more about me and have a conversation with me, then, then uh, look me up on LinkedIn and connect with me there. Okay. And for you all to connect with Simone on LinkedIn, her name is spelled as followed, S-I-M-O-N-E, last name Souter, S-A-M-O-N-E, 
U-T-E-R. And all of Simone's information will be in the show notes. So you could definitely connect with her, grab those insider tips and level up in your business and never be afraid to ask questions, reach out and connect. If there was something that Simone said that just didn't hit home or you still have some questions, she's right there. She's giving you her information. So she is accessible. So don't let this opportunity pass you by. And I definitely want to encourage you to be mindful where you are spending your marketing dollars because you want to make sure that you are getting a ROI, a return on your investment. And it's okay to fail, but fail fast. It's okay to take a step back and ignite those learning curves because those learning curves is what's going to set you up for success. And remember, we've all had those start ugly moments. If Simone and I had more time, we will tell you about our struggle pains and our start ugly moments because we don't want you to go through the same thing that we went through. So until we chat next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Don't forget to subscribe and share this segment. We're on 40 plus platforms and connect with us on YouTube at Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp for all things video content. And leave us a review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you're listening, because reviews are like a gift, feedback is a gift, and I want to know what's working, what's not working, or is there a topic you want to hear? That's how we get to connect with others. So until next time, ciao!